whole idea of guerrilla warfare sort of popped into my head. So you're going to take a perceived weakness and we're going to utilize that and turn it into a strength. Part of Saskatoon's Cultural Capitals Initiative, the Artists in the Community program placed artists with a variety of hosts throughout Saskatoon. One such host was the Saskatoon Health Region, who placed their artist at Sherbrooke Community Centre. Sherbrooke is a long-term care home, serving those with cognitive disorders, acquired brain injuries, as well as individuals with limited mobility. Jeff Noctegall, a visual artist, began workshops at Sherbrooke in early 2006 and soon had the program expanding beyond the borders of their designated painting studio. Well, it's... Uh started small, um, but the program actually started out, uh, the studio program started out uh, next door in what used to be a smoking room. And it didn't take long before we were completely filled up. I mean, that was a room where we'd have six wheelchairs in there and it was cramped. Um, but it really just took off. We've, we've kind of played around with everything. I mean, of course, just getting a bunch of walkers and canes and crutches. Uh, wrapping rags to the end of them, and uh, because if you know, if you give somebody, uh, you set them up at an easel, you give them a stretch piece of canvas, and you give them the little paintbrush, and you say, "Okay, do something." You know, they freeze up. You give somebody a big cane with uh, chunks of cloth wrapped on the ends of them. It's it's there's no fear. It's, there's no understanding. I mean, this is what kind of a strange tool is this? This is an improvised painting device. And it's, so there's no expectations of the type of mark that it's going to make. So through that process, uh, you know, they're able to just do as opposed to think of what it is they're supposed to do. There's no baggage, there's no preconception as to what it is that they're supposed to be doing. So um, I think it's been really freeing um, for them. What is this, what is this allow you to, to do that, that, that you couldn't have done before? Art, it helps me to to create, to, to be unique, to speak with a different voice, I guess you could say. As the, the project uh, progressed, um, mobility became more and more of an issue because so many of the individuals um, were uh, paraplegics or quadriplegics and there was definitely a mobility issue. And there was one individual who, uh, Larry, um, who is a quadriplegic, um, he actually has a head pointer. And I saw that head pointer and I said, Larry, I'm gonna stick a brush on the end of that and we're gonna make some paintings. What surprised me is I thought that he was gonna do these paintings and it was just gonna be a very limited amount of movement. He could only, he could only move his, his neck, just his head, just like that. And so I thought these paintings were just gonna be very small and very tight, basically encompassing about, you know, 20 inches square, max. Instead, you know, he maneuvered his chair in the tiny little studio that we started out with and painted these long stripes. And that blew me away because all of a sudden it just dawned on me. It's like, wow. I just learned a lesson there, for starters, because even though these individuals are, uh, are, are dealing with limited mobility, they have tons of mobility and dexterity. Uh, with, with these chairs, it's like, how can we turn these chairs now into the very thing that, that is going to make the painting? And so that whole, for me, these are very much guerrilla. It's a guerrilla practice. First of all, we had to be able to, you know, design the mount that could actually hold the arm onto the chair. And uh, once that's on there, it's, it's then just coming up with whatever is going to be making the marks. And in this case, 
what was going to make the mark is just a, a simple caster that I've uh, uh, put uh, felt on. And it's, it's really basic, but it worked really well. Well, in Sherbrooke, yeah, I've got the fastest here. It goes pretty quick. That's why you had uh, had first run at this? Yeah. Today, we laid out a huge canvas on the floor and hooked up an arm to my wheelchair that has a, a caster on the, on, the, on the left side of the chair, and it's got some uh, goat skin or sheep skin on it. And we have a funnel that ran down to, uh, to, the, to the goat skin. And in fluid motions, we painted on the canvas large shapes and lines and all sorts of calligraphy and stuff. And it was a really great time, and you know, it looks good. So now the sky is the limit as to how far it can go. I mean, getting this to work at its very most, you know, at this simple stage, um, and having it actually do what it was supposed to do, now I can get more complicated with it. So just conceptually, I mean, it's the sky's the limit with this, which is, you know, with how intense and how complex we can make them, and uh, so what we're seeing right now is just a very simple, uh, stripped-down version of how can we get the paint onto a surface and, and it worked like a charm and now it's just the ability to kind of uh, make it even more complex and get more things happening and uh, I mean I can't wait to get spray guns attached and uh, rollers and brushes just to make as many different marks as we possibly can and it's gonna be it's gonna be fun it was fun it yeah. didn't you had a blast it looked like fun I mean <laughs> I want to test drive one of these things too but see now think of it this way right now this is just one arm Picture this baby with, I mean, this thing's going to look like a crop duster. It's going to have like, it's going to have like two more arms coming off the other side. I want to have like a big cattle catcher off the front. We can rig up a trailer in the back doing stuff. I mean, we can get this thing. I want this thing to look crazy. I want it to look like it's coming from a different planet. Close encounters of the Matt kind. <laughs> Watching Matt do this painting uh, today was... My, my brain was starting to explode. You know, the, I've, I've got a little bit of a rush. I've got to go and lay down now. Because it's, the, you know, seeing the true potential of, of what could be there. And, you know, for me, what, what really got me, though, too, is, is that this was an amazing thing to watch, was this individual who has made uh, very small paintings with a mouth apparatus, but now watching him do a painting that's, you know, eight feet by six feet that he could have never done before. So with something as simple as a couple of chunks of steel, a little bit of welding and, a, and some paint, um, you know, somebody can, can make big stuff and make a big statement, a big splash that wasn't able to do it. And that feels pretty cool. And it looks great, too. From the very beginning, I knew something special was going to happen here. And, uh, you know, there's been a lot of surprises and twists and turns along the way, but I, I knew there was a potential here. And one of the things that I wanted to do from the very beginning was to have a show at a major gallery. Show's called The Insiders because uh, as progressive uh, of a place uh, that Sherbrooke is, it is still an institution. And the whole industry of long-term care, I mean, it's, these people are very much uh, insiders. Uh, this is their home, but, you know, but it's not their chosen home. Um, but then it's also a play off of uh, uh, outsider art. So The Insiders is very much then about that. 
um, outsider aesthetic. Uh, I came in there really with the idea of, of creating a place, uh, a studio, a studio program, where we would just work together and communicate visually. For a lot of the artists who have participated in this program, uh, it's just the finding of that voice um, and being able to express themselves. Some are, are just simply communicating for the sake of communication. It's just another language. It's another way for people to understand better who they are and for, for the individual to express who they are. And that's a very powerful uh, experience. Others have taken that a step further and are actually uh, critiquing um, the institution, um, that which is around them, uh, and using art as a voice or a way um, to, to make political statements. And that's very exciting to watch. I mean, whether, whether I agree with the political statements or not is irrelevant, but it's, it's incredible to see um, these voices, because these voices are a lot stronger uh, than I think a lot of their forms of verbal communication. And let's face it, some of these, uh, some of the individuals participating in this program, uh, you know, cannot communicate verbally. So this is this has been very powerful in 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 the sense that now it's they've learned another language. Um, they can reach more people, and I think through the show at the Mendel Art Gallery, the insiders, I think they're going to have the opportunity to really reach out to a lot of people and educate a lot of people. Now I want to turn to insiders. And this is, uh, as a way of introduction, and I'm going to introduce Jeff a little later, but Jeff Noctegall is standing over here. I knew him as our preparator at the Mendel Art Gallery. And, uh, He's also a very, very talented artist. Jeff would come in after he had his leave of absence, and he would be very excited, very passionate about what was going on at Sherbrooke Community Center. Uh, we listened to him, and uh, you know, it's, it's infectious. And he finally got myself and Dan Ring and Alex Badzak to come over and see what he was up to. And we were all blown away by what we saw. The work was incredible, and little did we expect uh, what we would find. Uh, Jeff is a catalyst for a creative activity. I think uh, that kind of synergy and energy has uh, produced some amazing work by some amazing artists. Uh, success? Uh, an incredible success. Uh, overwhelmed by the turnout. And, uh, and I think the show is unbelievable. I think it's, uh, it's a testament just as to how strong uh, the passion in these individuals is, because the work is incredible. And I think once people understand the story behind how the work was made, it makes it even more incredible. Please enjoy this. For me, this is a show uh, we're, we're working on this uh, at a provincial level. It's going to tour the province, uh, keeping the fingers crossed. Hopefully, it'll tour the country. Uh, we're working on an amazing catalog. Uh, I can't wait for everybody to enjoy that. So, you know, keep your ears peeled for uh, January because I think that's our launch date. When you see some of the work in this show and you understand uh, the patience um, and the amount of work uh, that they had to put into this, it's, uh, I mean, it is really humbling. Um, so it makes you want to get off your ass and get to work. Working uh, with these individuals and seeing some incredibly uh, unique mark making, some some incredibly authentic subject matter, like that stuff that's just coming straight from the gut or straight from the heart or straight from the head. But it's not taking any pauses or breaks or detours along the way. It's just finding itself on a page, on a canvas, whatever. And so for me, I've learned so much uh, from these people. Um, the, this is my peer group. And as far as I'm concerned, I'm getting uh, the chance to work with uh, some of the most interesting artists in Saskatoon. 
I, I don't think I was prepared for the, the profound effect that this was going to have on people who have participated, and that's including me. Um, this has been an incredibly humbling experience. Uh, it's changed my life, um, and it certainly has changed the lives of, of the artists that have participated in this because they've found this voice. Um, there's this sense of empowerment, and it's pretty it's pretty amazing to watch. For me, everything's in perspective. Um, let's put it this way, um, I'll never have another bad hair day again. Next steps, well, there's so many. Uh, I mean, uh, immediately, uh, you know, starting tomorrow, uh, I'm gonna start work on the catalog. Uh, just because we really want to get that out and it's going to be an incredibly impressive uh, publication. Uh, then we're going to start work on the provincial tour and then starting work on the national tour. Uh, that aside, I've got to get going on the mobile painting device. Uh, Matt's stuff turned out great and uh, now if I can get uh, proper investors and get people interested in this project, uh, the sky's the limit. So I'm going to be spending a lot of time getting the mobile painting device going. I, I have really high hopes for it because I think it's something that's going to revolutionize uh, I mean, this, I'd love to see uh, a mobile painting device in every uh, long-term care home. I mean, why not have this so these adaptive tools, this adaptive technology, so that individuals with limited mobility can make giant paintings um, and not be limited to just having to do uh, a mouth painting or a head stick painting, which is great. There's nothing wrong with that and it's exciting, but why not give them the option to do something uh, on a huge scale? I cannot wait to work with you uh, for the next year as my uh, contract has been extended for another year thanks to the SAS Guard Sport. So, so wait till you see what happens in another year. Uh, uh, Saskatoon Health Region again, Park Ridge. Uh, this is something that I look forward to expanding upon in the future. Uh, I believe that a partnership has to be formed here because we've started something that's changing lives. Um, it is so infectious and it's so positive and watching how it has changed everybody. This is something that we have to get out there. Um, I'm looking forward to partnering with the Saskatoon Health Region, with Sherbrooke, uh, with the Saskatchewan Arts Board, with the federal government, with the provincial government, because I want to see an artist in residence in every long-term care facility across the country. Congratulations to everybody, because this, this is a giant victory for everybody who's participated in it, because this isn't just one person doing this. This is, this is a group of people getting together and, and changing uh, changing lives, changing the world that we live in, so it's been fantastic. For me this has been an exercise in humility. This has been, um, this has just been about sharing of ideas, it's about collaboration, it's about um, getting people to, to, to think about things in a different way. Uh, and if I can bring my experience or my knowledge or my skills to something to, to help that, to promote that, to enable that, that's great uh, because I've learned so much in all of this and so for me this has all, all been about just the creative process and the importance of that creative process. For me it's, it's, it is fundamentally about that we all can make art, we can all communicate visually, it's just that some of us choose not to. So, uh, and it's and I think it's an important thing to do. Um, I think it's enabling. I think it's, you know, the more languages we can speak, um, the greater audiences we can reach.